Demon football coach Jay Thomas, whose team wraps up the season Saturday with the battle for Chief Caddo at Stephen F. Austin after what I would consider an inspired and pretty good performance against the number one unbeaten Sam Houston Bearcats. Coach T, um, three quarters of that game, the first quarter, the third quarter, the fourth quarter, it's pretty even. Uh, they took command of the first team that's done this to you guys, took command in the second quarter. Talk about that game for a minute. It was, and if you look at the stats, it was a lot closer, you know, on the stats and the numbers than the, the actual score on the scoreboard. And I uh, you know, thought our guys came out and played really well. And, you know, it slipped away from us uh, late a little bit uh, in the second quarter, but, you know, our guys came back the second half and really fought hard. We drove the ball down into the red zone twice, went for it on fourth down. You know, if we could have got touchdowns down there, we could have tightened the score up, put a little more pressure on their offense. But, you know, overall, I mean, pretty good game. Well played by our guys. Uh, we made mis mistakes along the way, but uh, very proud of the effort. All right, now looking ahead to Saturday in Stephen F. Austin, let's first talk about the build up around the game, which every year is the battle for the biggest trophy in sports, Chief Caddo, a tremendous story behind the trophy, uh, the shared relationships of Natchitoches and Nacogdoches and the two institutions. Uh, how meaningful is that? You've been involved in some of these games through the years. Uh, talk about the tradition in the battle for Chief Caddo. It's all about the Chief, right? Records go out the window, you know, it doesn't matter. Um, it's a rival game, it's a border war. Um, of course, the Chief is on the line. And, uh, you know, since we've been here, we've been able to win the Chief two out of the three years. We've got the Chief here with us, and we've got to plan on bringing the Chief back. And uh, it's very special, it is. Um, playing for the largest trophy in the country. And it's been around for a long time, the history of it. And we're going to be educating a lot of our new players of what this means. We'll start that education process tomorrow. We'll get back together. Um, really feel like our team's moving late, you know, uh, picking up some of the injured guys back a little bit. Now, they've, some have cast on and those type of things, and they're playing, you know, special guys. They really are, a special group, uh, fighting through all of this this year and giving us you know, a chance to compete. But yes, I mean, this is a big game and, and it's a great way to go out, uh, to bring the Chief back, you know, for our seniors and to finish our season up strong. All right, let's talk specifically about Stephen F. Austin. You're just getting into game prep, but I know you're very aware of uh, Coach Clint Conk. Mm -hmm. His son is an outstanding quarterback, been an all-conference quarterback in this league, and they have a lot of other good players as well. They do. Uh, Coach Conk's been very successful, uh, UCA and and what he did up there, and he left that program uh, solid ground, uh, hadn't changed a bit, and now he's down at, uh, and trying to implement it down there. He's only been there, this, I think it's third year. Uh, you see the change in the type of personnel that he wants. A lot of these guys are young. Uh, you know, his son, Zach, is the quarterback. He's a big guy, 6'6", six, six, he can run. Uh, he looks like a tight end, you know, playing quarterback. He's a tough guy to bring down. Uh, particularly in the red zone, they like to run him down when he gets close to the goal lines because of his size. He, you know, he's got a mismatch uh, most of the time on linebackers and safeties. Uh, but he throws the ball really well. Uh, you can see that they're, they're changing their offensive scheme up a little bit. Uh, it's more uh, throw than run oriented. They still run the football a good bit. But uh, young backs right now, uh, talented receivers. Breaking in a new offensive line, very similar to us too. Uh, defensively, been about the same, you know, um, in regards of giving up points, you know, as our defense. So uh, it matches up pretty well. You know, it ought to be a great game. Um, but they do, they, they've got a lot of talent, but I think they've went through a little injury bug too. You know, we, we're still researching some of that as well. Saw a couple of receivers get hurt against UCA. It may have uh, affected them a little bit. Uh, I know they had a hard loss last weekend at HBU. So we know they're going to be ready to play. This will be their seniors last game uh, playing at home. And then it's us Northwestern coming over and the chief on the line. So we know they'll be ready. That sounds like a lot of fun. Now, uh, after the game, you, you say farewell to 21 seniors, mm -hmm. but you bring a team back for 2017 that with all of the uh, injury situation this year and all of the new players you've brought in and the guys you have committed to and redshirted, uh, you've got a bunch of redshirts back.
but you've got a lot of experience back for 2017. Talk about that. We do. Um, and a lot of guys got a lot of playing time this year that, you know, wasn't really expected to have to play as much as they did. Uh, it'll turn out to be a good thing for us in the future. Um, and you look at uh, how many guys are going to letter this year. I think you, I think we had it, and you had it at 59 somewhere around there. That's what, that's pretty big. And then of course getting the injured guys back back in spring ball that'll be important for us. Uh, a lot, like you said, a lot of the young guys we could have pulled the red shirt this year and and used those kids, but um, we wanted to build for the future too. And uh, and you know for the last couple games of the season. Sometimes it's not the right thing to do, and we want to do the right thing by the kids, and um, you know, and the, and the right thing by the program. So, we do have a lot of young guys that are being redshirted that are going to have an opportunity to compete in the spring and make the team better next year. And um, you know, we just need to have another good, solid recruiting class this year, and you know, that'll help build things for for next year. So, it is exciting, you know, to look at you know the future and look into your crystal ball, and the coach's crystal ball and say that if you have all these guys and get these guys that, that, that you missed this year healthy and get them back, and then all these young guys you got redshirted, and you know, it could, uh, could be a really special team next year. All right, the off season starts Saturday evening. Uh, you've been involved in two wins with Chief Keto and one that we lost over there two years ago at the last moment. Uh, what is the difference in having the chief in the off season and not having the chief in the off season. Man, it's just when you walk in the building, you just get used to seeing the chiefs, you know, standing there. Um, and it, it is, it's very deflating. You know, it's, um, it's, it's a very uplifting when you win it and you go into recruiting and it just makes everything so much better in the off season uh, throughout the whole year, you know, just to have the chief here. And it just it means more to um, to everyone and particularly us because of what we do. We do this every day, you know, and I know it means a lot to our fans and, and our alumni and you know former players that's played for this trophy before. And they understand the guys that coached and, and played here, they understand. And and you go through a year where you don't have it, it's not it's not a whole lot of fun. It really isn't. You know, and you just get used to seeing that chief there and just builds inside of you as you go along. Um, you know, we've lost the NSU trophy this year. I'm so used to having that trophy sitting around the office all the time, you get used to seeing it. Got an empty spot over there. You know, it just doesn't look right not having that NSU trophy there. So it's the same way with the Chief. And um, man, it's, um, it's very uh, important that we go play very well and bring the Chief back. All right, uh, as relates to the Chief, I was watching the movie Night at the Museum the other night. Have you seen Night at the Museum with Ben Stiller? Yeah. You're here late at night. Yeah. Nobody else but you and the chief. Yeah. Ever have any Night at the Museum activity? <laughs> Sometimes you wonder, you know, we've got a screen that'll just pop, it'll just go up on its own, you know. You, you watch the film, all of a sudden it's like, whoop, the thing will take off and go up. And you're like, hey, a ghost around here. You don't know if it's the chief or what's going on, but uh, yeah, it's a lot of strange things happen in this building after 11 p.m. at night. Yes, there is. It's, uh, it gets to be a little eerie. You hear things bumping against the wall or in the wall, or you don't know exactly what's going on, man. So it could be the chief rambling around. But you've never seen him on the second floor. I hadn't seen him on the second floor. You know, um, it, it might be because, you know, he's. Um, He's a little stiff-legged, you know, to make it up there. I don't know, but uh, you know, like I've said before, you know, Chief's always been a good listener. Well said, yeah. Coach Jay Thomas. Good luck Saturday. Thank you.